My name is Charmaine Simpson, I'm the Chief Executive of Black Issue Studies and I'm representing the Admin and Communication um, Subcommittee on the National African People's Parliament. I thought the case was handled very, um, oh, what's find the words to describe, very <coughs> Very disorganised, very disrespectful to the family. The fact that there were so much um, points that they should have followed up on and they never, and the way they treated the family, a lot of um, issues with that case. And I thought it was very disgust disgusting. And it was just a sign for the black community that we need to not just rely on the police in terms of justice in this country, we need to organise and come together as well. We need a, a representative bo body to represent us. Oh yes, definitely, because one person alone can't shout loud. A large group of us um, coming together and organising and putting pressure on the government and the Metropolitan Police can have um, some effect on the outcome. And that was the case that for me, when I was, I learned about this case when I was in school and it was very um, disturbing to me watching the family go through what they went through and it's horrible and especially as a mother now we could still be going through that same um, struggle today Myself, Charmaine Simpson and my husband Mark Simpson um, have been involved in the form of the National African People's Parliament from the start, which came out of the idea of the Black People's Day of Action that happened last year, 2nd of March 2011, and we've been all, we all helped organise the Na National African Black People's Day of Action, um, we've been attending all the committee meetings and been um, trying to galvanise the community through our Black Issue Studies Network to, um, to get, the, the, get the community to come together and to form this National African People's Parliament, which is, which is long overdue, long overdue. We can improve our environment via um, looking at the conditions that we're living in in this country. So for example, whether it's our housing, whether it's our economic stance in this country, whether it's our... Um, whether the different issues that we've got to face with, for example, mental health, how we're overrepresented in the mental health institution as well, looking at our well-being, looking at the food that we're eating as well. And just you coming together as a collective and looking at all these different issues and formulating a plan for ourselves. Um, I don't believe in waiting for other people to do that for ourselves. We need to take responsibility for that and do it ourselves, basically. I'm not really concerned of what message it sends out to the wider society as long as it sends out the mission message to our people. I don't really watch what other people are doing. We need to start watching ourselves now. Is we we like to look on other community saying this person's doing this, this person's doing that. No, what are we doing? We need to look, start looking inwards now. Stop looking outwards. We need to look at what are we doing in this country because we can stand up there and say, oh, I've been an activist for 30 years, but what are we actually done within those 30 years? What are our children that are coming up over the years? What have they seen? They haven't seen you doing anything. So you standing up there saying you're an activist and you're doing anything doesn't really mean nothing to the young people that are coming up. So we need to go back to uh, basics, basically look at what's um, affecting grown people and young people as well and get the respect back from our young people as well. So they actively see us trying to do something that will impact on their lives as well. Mental health, we need to look at why is there a high rate of um, black men and African men and women in the uh, mental health institutions? We need to go back and look at what is going on around these people. What is the conditions that are making these people join these institutions? And then we need to look at how we can mitigate some of these um, issues and conditions as well. And then it will prevent a lot of us going into these um, institutions, whether it's diet, whether it's health, lifestyle, even just getting back to basic, loving each other, learning to communicate with each other as well. We need to go back to basics as well and look at us. Like I said, like I said before, we need to start looking inwards as well. What can we do in order to help other people and then take it from there? Okay. No one springs to mind, so I'd have to see myself.
<laughs> that's how, how it has to be or somebody that can prove to me that they are representative of this of, of the wider community somebody that has been there from the community that, and actively doing things in the community um, there's nobody jumps to mind couldn't say for example when people say oh we have black politicians representing us in um, in the parliament no they represent the parliament they don't represent us so we've got to look at that no one jumps to mind at the moment I wouldn't want somebody that is there just for the community, just for the limelight, and then you don't see them again. Only the ones that are scared to venture and talk to the community unless they've got 700 bodyguards and, and all these press around them. I want somebody that is um, grown up with the people, from the people, not somebody that like, lives in the suburbs and then coming in and then thinking that oh, they can represent us, no. I want somebody that is in the community and that will listen and take on board what the community is saying as well and be genuine as well. We We... Throughout history, we've had too much people that are leaders on the outside and not leaders on the inside. So we need to start looking at that as well. We need to find, or we need to create our own leaders. We're all leaders in ourselves. We're all leaders. We just need to realise that potential. I see myself involved in the National African People's Party in a variety of different ways. So, for example, using the Black History Studies network that I've created with my husband in order to um, encourage other people to join an organisation. So we do a lot of courses about black history and talking about organisations that we've had in the past So and what we can create in the future. So basically using the history to look up, look back in history, critique, look at the parts that worked, so what, look at the parts that didn't work, look at the parts of history where we've been infiltrated by others that didn't have our interests in heart and also looking at those pitfalls in order to create our future. So I would see myself involved um, in the National African People Parliament in that capacity as well. So information sharing, even on the board if necessary as well, depending on, on the time constraint because I'm a full-time mom, work as well and run a business as well. But I will always be there for my people, regardless of how many hours in the day. As you can see, the bats under my eye. I'm always constantly working because it's not just about myself. It's not even just about my children or or, or about the, my family members. It's about the wider community as well. We need, because if it affects me, myself, it's affecting somebody else as well. We need to come together now. I'm, I'm just sick and tired of it now. <laughs> and I'm, I'm quite young, I'm only 30, and I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people in our community suffering, and I don't like that. So I want to do something while I'm alive and kicking. So whatever small, because I think what I'm doing at the moment is quite small, but I would love to take over the world and do something more. So that's Thank my you. stuff. Thank you. <laughs>